Hi guys, today I'm working on um, refactoring a bit of the physics code inside of XGL and I thought it would be a good opportunity to just talk about what refactoring is and how you go about it. Because normally when you've got quite a bit of um, code in your code base, sometimes um, it just grows old, particularly if you're working in a team and a large code base, then not all of the code was written by you, which means it needs, um, you'll take some time to get used to it. So eventually you will need to consider um, how you're going to bring it up to speed, as it were, because legacy code, I mean, generally legacy code is not bad just because it's legacy. It can get bad if it no longer follows the new conventions or the new API, uh, which makes it difficult to change. And if the code is difficult to change, then it's difficult to maintain and it's going to stay there for quite a while. So you want to avoid that. Obviously, if it already works and it's kind of full feature complete, you don't really want to change any of that. But from time to time, it's nice to just revisit um, some of the code that's there. For example, what I can see here is um, the prefix notation. It's not really used in Java, so it must have been um, converted from something like C++, where this is quite common to specify uh, the type of the variable or where the, the scope of the variable. And what I'd like to do is just kind of update a little bit. There's not going to be a lot of action um, in this video. So there should really be called just body capacity. Here's the thing, there's also a body capacity here, so this needs to be carefully refactored. I mean, just renaming is super easy in ID, you just you know, shift F6 and then just rename. But it's important to check. I didn't want to do that, I wanted to do this. Good news is, um, IntelliJ is usually smart enough to add things like that. Because otherwise, that would have been uh, incorrect. Because it would just be this, and we don't want that. When you're making uh, refactoring changes, try to minimize changes uh, in a single commit. Because then, if something goes wrong, if something goes wrong, you can easily revert. So I've changed that. I'm assuming that change. Well, not many things, just the stuff that's over here, which is fine. I don't think this is being used anywhere else. Maybe somewhere over here. Yeah, that's not really necessary. So I can get rid of it. At some point, in, in a different commit, presumably. You also want to minimize the number of different changes in a single commit. If the commit is just about removing something, then just stick to that rather than adding and removing at the same time. <coughs> so I think that's enough for a single commit. Let's just check. So this is what it was, the red lines. The green lines is what it is now. Yeah, I'm not a fan of this this thing here because it's it's the same thing, right? So we we do this here, that's important, but everywhere else it's the same value. We can get rid of this. Let's just do a search for um, this dot. Okay, so that's fine. Uh, and these are the only two occurrences. Yep, happy with that. This is repeated code, right? It's different, but 
the structure of it is similar. So I wonder if there's a way to simplify this. But that's for a different commit. Let's just finish this one. So I've just renamed this one thing. <clears throat> this became that body capacity, body capacity. Yep, yep, yep. Yep, that looks good. So now the reason why this particular refactoring that I'm currently doing is dangerous because I don't have tests for this. And you should never try to do refactoring without tests. That's a very potentially dangerous uh, refactoring because, well, you don't know if the code that you changed now works. Because presumably it, it worked in the first place, but you want to ensure you refactor when you have written tests. Um, I should really write tests at some point for um, the things I'm doing. Though the small refactoring, the small change, isn't that big of a change. So I'm kind of confident that it didn't introduce any new issues. <clears throat> um, commit removed prefix from a variable name. Technically it's a field, but it's fine. And I usually refactor when doing uh, pair programming, but I've got no partner today, so uh, my pair programming partner is all of you who are watching this. So if you spot anything, uh, let me know, and I'll go back and fix it. But hopefully there won't be any issues. Right, so we've changed that, and then these are probably the most logical thing to do now. So I don't think this is used in many places, so it's just here, two more, and then at the very end over here. Shall we get rid of asserts first and then do the renaming? That will reduce the number of uh, changes. Joint count is less than joint capacity. Is that always true? In IntelliJ, if you do Alt F7, it will give you usages of that function or variable. And then you can go and explore where it is being used. So it's here, which is I'm pretty sure somewhere in the world, in the physics world. Just close the left pane so it doesn't interfere. Right, so that is where we add a joint. A joint list. <coughs> joint list. And the capacity is. If it's the size of this, then we're fine. So how does the island get initialized? Joint count. Okay, so where's the joint count then? How's it being? Uh, exclude accessors. Right. I just want to see how it gets written. Create joint, yep, just, that's fine. And then, okay, so it keeps track number of uh, joints we have in the physics world. Which means this should always be less than this value because there is no way to add a new joint object while you're doing the step through in the physics world. And the physics tick, right? So where's the uh, solve? Nope, this one. Where's this get? Uh, where's this called from? It's here, and I assume this is somewhere inside. Yeah, it's locked, and then unlock it here. 
Okay, so anything between locked and unlocked, nothing can change. If it changes, the whole thing just ignores it or crashes, one of the two. Which means we should never have in the current code a possibility of this being false. So I'm happy with that. Add contact, let's do the same thing. This is also being done in solve and it checks contact count and contact manager. Okay, so I assume, again, this is fine. In which case, this should also be fine. <coughs> Yeah, that's fine. It's also inside solve. Okay, so the three changes we made was just removing asserts. Yep, that's good. Uh, what else can we change? Yeah, you can, you can see that this can be extracted. Because <coughs> this thing is being calculated twice. And generally, you don't want to calculate anything more than once. Because um, it's the same result. And you particularly don't want to do that in a loop, which is what's happening here, I think. Time of impact. That is going to be called in a loop. But I'm not going to change any of the sort of um, syntactical code just now. I'm going to just rename a few things and and then possibly write tests. Because without tests, it's tricky to change the implementation. Right, so we can rename this thing now to contact capacity. <coughs> contact capacity doesn't change, so it's the same thing here. And then let's see what else we changed. Get diff contact capacity yep that looks fine field can be converted to a local variable that's awesome. So when IntelliJ tells you this, that means you don't need to have this um, as a field variable. <coughs> in which case, in which case, what's the point of that then? I can see from the um, lines over here, which tell you where it's being used. It's only used in this section, in this scope. So it actually isn't used anywhere else. And um, the changes that I previously made were making all these things private, just extracting um, usage from outside to being in inside. Generally speaking, you want most of your classes to have private variables, or you want to reduce this visibility uh, modifier of your variables as much as possible. Because that means it's very easy to make a change. Because every change is localized into that file. <coughs> and obviously you can have accessors uh, if you actually need to access uh, any of the values. 
but this is an internal class. It's only used uh, within the physics world and nowhere else. So it's actually package private. Essentially, it could be made even a um, private inner class, maybe, if we put it in here inside the world. But the world class is big. It's 1,400 lines. That's bigger than, uh, than I'm comfortable with. So it needs to get reduced possibly to at least a thousand lines if possible. <clears throat> right, but that's not something I'm worried about right now. <clears throat> well, right, let's try to alt enter convert field to local variable. That looks good. Let's try that. So it basically got rid of that line that was there. Remove the field because we no longer need it. <coughs> Join capacity is now being used only to um, resize the array if needed. If joint capacity is greater than the current size of the array, then increase the size. This looks fine. So we got rid of that line, which is good. That is no longer necessary. And then we just use whatever is being passed here. Yeah, that looks fine. <clears throat> converted field into a local variable right anything else we can do these need to be renamed using prefixes still. Yep, works good. Let's rename this to just contacts. good let's rename that to uh, just joints wait what's this line oh it's two different variable names joint okay so there is a kind of like a variable for all joints and then each joint contributes to that thing 
Okay, self position constraints. I need to think about this because there's some stuff going on that is not easily readable. But that's fine. We only changed that bit. Just renamed a few things. Remove a prefix from a variable name. And let's do the last one. Oh, there are a few more things as well. Positions. Okay, we're doing quite a bit of things, uh, quite a bit of stuff with positions. I don't think there are name clashes. I don't see any name clashes. That should be just positions. Yep, that'll do. Remove prefix from variable name. And then that one is the last one. It's very similar to positions. Sanity check, uh, velocities, yep, yep. That looks fine. Okay, uh, so we fixed the variable names. It's now hopefully easier to go through it. When we initialize this, we do that, that. Mm. I mean, the only case this is going to be true is um, at the very start, because these would be null. We could potentially just initialize these to um, zero length arrays, in which case that statement goes. <clears throat> so we simply check if body capacity is greater than body's length. Let's do something that's easier. When you're refactoring, um, you typically start with the easy bits because at the very beginning, you have quite a lot of code that isn't yours uh, or yours but is very old. And then to minimize risk, you would start with something that is super easy that you know can't really break anything. But again, having tests is great. So let's just check this. Translation x multiplied by the same thing plus that. So it's the same value, right? Because these are not being rewritten. 
First, let's simplify this bit. We're going to we're going to import this. In fact, we're going to import all the static things from JBox settings. Just like that. So return this back to where it was. And then let's check what we changed. So that line is going to import all the static variables and functions potentially. So got rid of that, got rid of that. Then here we got rid of this bit, this bit. That's much nicer to read. In fact, I can see that this can be extracted because I think this is being called in a loop. Then we got rid of that bit. Interesting, there is a repeated code again. I assume in general solve and solve time of uh, impact. Okay, so these are all the changes that we made by importing um, static variables. It's good. This is not just renaming though, so I'm just going to double check again. That is that. Max translation, max translation, and then max rotation squared, max rotation. Yeah, that looks fine. Um, statically import J box settings. Jbox, yeah, that's fine. Okay, so there is a scope to these things. The scope is starts over here, ends over here. So this whole thing could potentially go into a different method, which we're going to call integrate positions. So the scope of this thing is fixed, which means it's only used over here. Translation X, I'm going to rename this to TX, which is quite commonly used for translation X. And this is T Y. And this thing gets simplified to the single line, which is much easier to read. Let's put a space between. So we can now see that it's literally the same value. It's being used, it's being calculated twice.
Is there a variable called translation? I don't think so. So let's create one. Translation. I usually also kind of just copy that and paste into here and kind of <laughs> just look at it. If nothing has changed, then it must be the same thing. I don't always trust my eyes. Sometimes copy-pasting um, is a nice way to see if it is exactly the same thing. And it is. If I do Control z nothing changes because I pasted exactly the same literal string. So that value goes in here. We calculated once. We then use a translation to check if it's greater than max translation squared. I suppose we should add translation squared. Let's do that. Translation squared. <coughs> so if translation squared is greater than max, then obviously we need to do something to not to make sure that it's not greater than max. So we use max translation and divide by the square root of the translation squared, which basically gives us translation. So max translation over translation is the ratio. That looks fine. And then this is the ratio that gets multiplied uh, to change the velocities. Or at least that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, and then the same thing we're doing with rotations, it seems. <coughs> but this time we have the rotation itself. So it's it was actually a good choice to call this translation squared, because it is indeed squared. It's the, uh, the, the triangle, right? It's a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So this is a and this is b. In order to obtain c, we're then, we're then going to square root it. Uh, so that's looking fine. The good news is we're now just um, calculating this once. It's not going to make any visible difference, but at least it's refactored which may help us sometime in the future if we were to do a larger refactor. We should bring these uh, probably down because I don't think C is being used anywhere in here. So we can do a few things, which is, I mean, we don't need tests for that because I'm relatively confident that this is not going to change much. Just bringing um, certain variables to the scope. I mean, they are inside, inside the same scope, but just closer to where they're being used for the first time. That helps in refactorings. <coughs> first, let's deal with this commit. This is just a simple rename. Um, and then instead of that, we got translation squared, which is basically this. So it gets here, greater than translation squared. Yeah, that looks fine. Refactor. Just run some tests for um, sanity's sake. Because we do have some tests, um, but just not in, in this specific uh, area. This module, which is FXGL entity, has 280 tests, but they're not um, covering this bit of code I'm currently working on. 
So the C is for the first time being used over here. You can easily check because the ID highlights it. So we can just do this and do this. What about A? A is probably the angle, right? C is the center. Maybe. <clears throat> A is being used for the first time over here. So let's take that and place it here. And then now we placed it, kind of, we localized it almost. It's actually possible to see some interesting things that you wouldn't otherwise notice. So we create this local variable, we're then using it, this thing, to set that local variable. We're then increasing the value of that variable by this amount, and then we are setting it back. Now, is this the same thing as doing that? Doing that, because we are using the base of that, <clears throat> and then writing this. So is that semantically equivalent to what we are doing over here with these three lines? Because syntactically, obviously, that's different. Semantically, that means in terms of meaning, like, is it doing the same thing? Or I should say, does it have this, does it produce the same result? So, because it's always not doing the same thing, it's not creating the selectable variable anymore. Suppose this thing is five, this set being set to this thing. This is five now plus 10, 15. 15 is being set here. This is five and this is 10, 15. I mean, kind of checks out. Yep, let's do that. and just hope it doesn't blow up in our face. <coughs> For the commit, however, I'm going to place this back to minimize the extent of the change. So what we did was we took this away from here. And then we added um, that line, which is just taking the same thing increasing it by that h multiplied by w value and then it's going to be set back to this thing. So essentially we're using a local variable as a temporary variable that we don't really need. <coughs> variable 
now we can bring this over there. What is C? C is a vector two. There is absolutely no point in making it final because just four lines of code that followed it. And we are definitely not rewriting C. So that's fine. <coughs> We could rewrite this as add local. I don't know if it's more readable. And then just copy paste those into here. But I don't think this is that much of a um, quality change. So I'll just keep this thing here. Where is V used? Okay, so V is used over here. That's fine. Um, there's quite a bit of code over here, but I think it's fine to not make it final because I generally don't use this large font, which is 26. Generally, I use something like 13, so I can easily see this whole thing um, on one page. And we can easily see that V isn't being uh, rewritten. So this basically clamps V, and that clamps W. <coughs> Now, interestingly, this is only used over here. So let's move this around and see what happens. So wrote that. Uh, w. So the scope ends here. Okay, I didn't. I don't need to look further. This is our W, right? W is used to compute the rotation and then we clamp uh, W as needed. <coughs> now, w is used in a few places, so I'm not going to do anything with it, at least now. I'm happy with the changes that we made so far, which were tiny steps. And this is what you want from your effective code. Okay, that's, that's fine. Um, let's just check what we did. We moved C over here, got rid of final, moved, well, got rid of final for V, <coughs> and moved W closer to it, being used for the first time. Yeah. Factor. Now, can we extract this whole thing into a different method? Or is that enough for now? <clears throat> Something needs to be ha uh, done with these things. I don't want to touch them now. Okay, so A is angle. You can figure out what something is by checking 
where it's coming from or where it's being used so where it's going to the coming from didn't work because it didn't have anything associated with it but usually when it comes to physics you want to store th something like the center something like the angle the rotation um, so you can compute sine cosine easily uh, and then the whole transform thing which you're going to apply like translations but then by looking at the kind of end um, and point as it were of this variable it says world angles and C is center world positions okay it's good these things need to be renamed because they're underscored also there must be a way to set linear velocity rather than doing this accessing uh, a field there's quite a bit of stuff happening over here oh yeah that thing that I wanted to extract because these are constants right well they're not final but they're constants in the context of a single um, run of the application so they're not being changed inside the application. You can change it before the application starts, which is fine. So these could be extracted. Yeah, let's extract those and call it a day. Because you don't want to do refactoring for too long because um, you might miss a few things because you get tired in terms of just reading code so uh, I'm going to come back to this with a fresh pair of eyes once I've done this okay let's open this uh, right I no longer need world so it's basically the same value multiplied by itself so it's linear sleep tolerance squared Oh, I see why it's not constant because if you change that before the start you would also need to change the, the, the square value but it still need, doesn't need to be computed more than once Again, it's not going to modify, um, it's not going to improve performance but by that much. Okay, let's leave it here and then um, I'll come back to it. What else can we do? Okay, something similar is happening over here. Is that more or less the same piece of code that we just fixed? At the top? Because this one is for just general solve, uh, general solve method, right? interesting if it's doing it's not doing exactly the same thing but it's doing quite a lot of similar things so first we're going to make this look like the other one simplify it and then potentially because I've just read through it and this is exactly the same right like up to here the 
change in position A and velocity W. So these two lines and these two lines are not the same because they're not being set over here. But everything else is exactly the same, which means there's in the future a method that's going to emerge. Method's going to be extracted, which is good. It's really good. So this, which is again scoped to just this, right? Yep, it's going to call it TX again. It's going to call it TY. And we're going to eventually get rid of repetition in the future. I like that. You don't want a lot of repetition in your code. You may want to repeat your code if you're just developing it, but once it's there, once you know it's not going to change much, then you start getting rid of repetition. What did we call it here? Translation squared. Yeah, that looks fine. Relation squared, if it's greater than that, do that. Now, interestingly, this bit of code is using a multiply local ratio and this bit of code doing it um, manually, which is exactly the same thing because you multiply x and y by that value. So we're going to leave it like that for for this bit I'm going to replace that bit with this one the trick is to make sure that the code that you're trying to extract from is going to look very similar or ideally the same as the other bit of code. So we want to now kind of make this look like this one. So W is being used over here, yep. Start W to here. W, rotation, rotation, ratio, ratio, absolute value, rotation, yep, that looks fine. C is used just before integrate. And A is used over here. I'm going to refactor A as I did uh, with this bit of code on the right hand side. Because A is being used in a few more places. So I'll keep it like this for now. Yeah, the left hand side and the right hand side are identical now, up to an extent. That's good. That, that's something that I can work on um, in the future. Okay, so I'll just compile, run test, maybe quickly run something that uses physics just to make sure nothing's been broken like i know platformer sample the fxgl repository itself doesn't have many games there are just quick samples to ensure that uh, physics works as intended we got stuck there
Yeah, we shouldn't have too many problems because we haven't really um, we changed quite a bit, but they're reasonably simple changes. Yeah, that's fine. But ultimately, we should have uh, more tests there. On that note, um, in this video, we've refactored, well, mostly this class, which is the island class um, internal to the physics world that allows us to, as far as I can understand, to solve certain um, constraints on the bodies. So their positions, velocities, and um, angles can be computed during the physics tick. I'll see if I can uh, refactor that bit of code that was uh, around code repetition. But I think that was a good day of refactoring. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys later.